live. Hopefully that was a, a quick break for everyone. So back. Okay, hopefully that worked on the streaming and everything. So okay, cool. All right, Kote. I think um we're ready anytime you're ready. Just All two right. ad breaks, like I said before. Two ad breaks. How many times a week would you say is too many times to have beans? <laughs> um, I'm just going to say three times. Exceeding three times Whoa. is probably too many. Um, I don't know how, I like how that. many. How I mean, many times, uh, what, what is the conventional wisdom? There, there are a lot of kinds of beans out there, though. True. Well, let, let's, true. let's just say, let's say, okay, your selection... Well, okay, this is a good this is a good point because you could okay, you could think like black beans and pinto beans, kidney beans, you know, the the larger beans. There must be lentils. a name for these beans. Right, but exactly. But then we get into lentils and it's just all over the place. We don't like that's a whole other situation there. A lentil versus a pinto bean, you know, you even got lima beans. You got the big beans and you got the small beans. Mm. And I think I don't know, I think I think I think I mean, I feel like there are some cultures where it's like there's always beans, just beans all the time. Right? As, as Johnny Cash sang, look at them beans. <laughs> Wait, is that an actual song? Oh, yeah. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. <laughs> look Fantastic. at them beans. Although, I don't know. I think I took your question to mean sort of like beans is like a primary side. Like, I don't know. Beans yeah, just is yeah. like a ingredient and other things yeah that's kind of like unlimited I, I, but i don't know beans is like i'm gonna have a side of beans with whatever i'm eating I, I think three is like that's sort of the upper limit yeah yeah that four that fifth time you're gonna be like oh, i'm sick of beans uh, huh. look, look at those beans i don't want any more of them <laughs> well it raises another question like can you eat the same meal i can eat the same meal like multiple times a week like no problem oh, yeah. i like i like it but like i don't know my house other people hate it. So um, I don't know. I think that's that, that's maybe a variation of your question. Is like, how well, many times I, can you eat the same meal in a week and not feel no, annoyed I'm, I'm, by it? I'm assuming that you're eating the same meal you're eating is like a healthier meal than not. Yeah, eating, something with like known it. calories, no nutrition. You can just be like, oh, I know exactly what's in it. So, you know. So what, what are you, you going to be eating the same of? You, you get a turkey salad? What are, what's I don't know. I usually there? do some kind of variation of like chicken, like chicken, rice, and uh, like, you know. Beans. Maybe beans, <laughs> could be beans, but usually like chicken, rice, broccoli, vegetable kind of thing, right? That's a real. Oof, the broccoli. That's like a 500 calorie kind of meal. If, now if a broccoli, want. broccoli is a real solid. I feel like a broccoli is just like that's a solid vegetable. It kind of holds up the whole the whole food selection thing there. I'm not really sure how that happened, but it is like what what is it about? Why is that? Is it just because it's so like tough, so it feels like durable? Like I don't really even know if broccoli is good, but I, think I sure it, do eat a lot. It's easy to it. prepare. I think I think that's probably yes. part of it. And and of course, you know, the the broccoli is is actually like five or six different vegetables in one. You know, it's depending on uh, which strain of How it you, you count? have. Huh? Well, it's like broccoli and cauliflower are like the same species. Oh, really? And, that's and right. then it's like collard greens, maybe. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, there's some there's some like you know. Uh, you know, science um, blog post or yeah, science post that's like you know technically these are all the same plant, mm -hmm. right? And it's uh, yeah, maybe Brussels sprouts are in there too. Oh um, yeah, yeah, now, yeah. They're all know, like the I, same plant, just you know different uh, traits. Or, I think or, I, I think I could eat collard greens every day. But that would be the that would be the best. <laughs> that one's like too like that's like an opinionated like some some people are gonna love that and other people oh, aren't. Yeah, like whereas yeah. I think broccoli is like no one. Well, I think some people really do like it, but it's very neutral. Like, I feel like yes, you get served broccoli. Yes. It's like people are like, oh, broccoli. They're just like, it's, I'll you know, it. other vegetables. I don't know. The more exotic you get, the more objections you get. Or or yeah. potentially, you know, people do love other things. But like, well, th then you got your super tasters who, you know, they, they can't take the broccoli. Yeah. Mm. I think, yeah, you, I think if someone, if you, you got to learn how to eat broccoli, because that's going to be, that's going to be your, the default vegetable for learn a lot of servings in life. Yeah. Now, now, okay. Now, how about, you know, okay, so you got a lot of we've got a lot of experience with broccoli. We're we're having beans three times a week. Now, how do, how do you crack the mystery of spinach? I feel like mm. spinach is this thing that would be great to eat, but there's just something that just like doesn't work, right? Like it's theoretically a good side to have a lot of, but it's always like you buy a big bag of spinach, and next thing you know, you've got a spoonful, right? 
but it goes then if bad you, fast. Yeah. And it goes, yeah, it goes bad fast. And then, and then if you, most of the time when you cook it, it just turns into this pulpy mess. But like, I feel like I have had spinach that was like actually good at, at places. Well, like, like, was I, it like coated in butter and like in that maybe. kind of spinach, I, cream you know, spinach or something like that? Now, That's the only okay, time well, I've had it where it's spinach. good. Sure, sure. I mean, you could, like I'm, <laughs> yeah, you could probably take a cream, a cream spinach recipe and put like, you know, yard leaves in there and it would be good. <laughs> like, it doesn't really matter what you got going there. But I, I think maybe that, that is like, a, I, I need to figure out mastering uh, spinach and maybe uh, making collard greens every night. That would be awesome. Just always have that on the pot. You know, start in the morning, put some greens in there, sweep the floors, and get ready for some uh, collard greens at night. <laughs> I like it. I don't know. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of, like, on collard greens in, in the Dutch, that doesn't feel like that would. That, I don't that think would, they sell that here. I was going to say, that would set you apart, I think, a little bit, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be like? Probably. Yeah. They'd be like, why aren't you eating cheese? Or potatoes. Well, it's like you're, uh, you did a nice pizza review, Cote, on, on your TikTok yes. the other day. That was uh, big know. Americans. Um, so you, I don't know. You maybe you could have the big pizza shop with collard greens. That's what mm. that's what's waiting. <laughs> that's what the Netherlands needs. So, I don't like spinach on pizza. I guess you could serve it on pizza, but you know, yeah, I, I, that would be good. Mm. You could do spinach like, you know, like you do in a lasagna or something. A lasagna. Boy, I haven't had a lasagna in a long time. Uh, that's like a weekly staple. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Costco nope. lasagna is super easy here. I mean, you just grab it. It's just like, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I mean, Costco lasagna is just like a perfect go to. Got to feed a bunch of people, don't want to make spaghetti, hate pizza. Just make yourself a lasagna. Do they, do they still have that, that $7 bottle of Canadian maple syrup? Because uh, we, we got to buy a lot of that when we come there. So today, that's a, a future show segment. We, I want to see like the shopping list that you're, you're last time you came over. It was quite, it was quite funny and extensive. So you should publish that yeah. on in the 21st. It, it is a re re recurring conversation with my kids. Next time we're in Austin, all the restaurants we have to eat at. You know, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kim and yeah. I were thinking about like, I wanted to stay at like a, you know, an Airbnb and she's like, why don't we stay in a hotel? And I said, well, it's nice to have a kitchen. And she said, we don't need a kitchen because I'm going to eat out for every meal. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's not wrong. Yeah, my kids she are was like, like we, all we need is a, a large fridge for the leftovers. You know, yeah. Yeah. That's actually yeah. Good. The kids were like, you know, we like it when, when grandmother, you know, grandmother tries to cook, but we don't want, want her food. We want to go out to eat. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you. There's a lot, a lot of, a lot of barbecue to be had. A lot of uh, Tex-Mex we had, I would imagine. That's got to be mm. on the list. Yeah. Mm. So good. Stuff. All right, All hey, right. before we start again, like uh, everyone go check out uh, Drada, one of our new sponsors. They can help you out with all, all right. your compliance. So everyone, check them out. Be compliant. That's right. Or not. It's always good, it's always good to be <laughs> That be would compliant. be a good ad read. <laughs> all right. Yard leaves. <laughs> I don't know what else to call them. <laughs> <laughs> That's good enough. Greens. <laughs> Greens. Good enough. <clears throat> Well, that company, Dagger, got some funding. Now, we could talk about the, the idea of, of putting a layer of abstraction on top of uh, a CICD pipeline. Yep. That's what programmers love to do. Put another layer on a layer, as it were, which is fine. But now I uh, uh, related to this. It uses some... I need some explanation of what's going on here, but it, it looks like it uses uh, something called Q, C-U-E, Mm. Which, as far as I can tell, is like basically Java interfaces, I think, like with the curly braces and you define like types. And it has like a lot. It's been a long time since I've read like um, like developer first, only developer language, like documentation for a new company with lots of words like infinitely extensible abstraction layer. And then, and then lots of clever phrasing, like in this Q thing, it talks about a type is a value, and they, and they put that in italics, and they try to explain that kind of stuff. But from what I can tell, this Q thing, someone was like, YAML doesn't really have uh, a schema or typing. We right. don't want to use XSD files, or definitely no DTDs. <laughs> so we need to come up with a new oh. system that basically defines a schema and the types of values in there. 
because that doesn't exist in YAML yet. Yeah. Is, that, is that kind of what's going on here? I, th- I think you nailed it pretty well. I mean, it's it's a uh, a better interface to JSON, I guess. Mm. A, a programmer's interface to JSON that uh, tries to add some some constructs on top of it. Uh, you know, I, they're not the first to, to mess around with uh, ways to generate YAML or JSON more efficiently. But uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. set up the whole, I mean, daggers, that, I get it. I for mean, me, that's I, not the interesting thing about dagger, right? Well, I was going to say, Matt, maybe set up like what what is, because I think that was the part, I guess, this kind of like broader question is like maybe to set up like when you look at dagger, like what problem is it solving? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think I think what dagger is trying to solve is, I mean, this is my take on it. So obviously, uh, you know, do your own research. <laughs> but... <laughs> But uh, it, it looks they're they're trying to come up with a set of reusable um, components. So if you're building your CI CD pipelines, um, they are portable uh, and interchangeable. And you know they they I think they reference you know Lego blocks several times. So if you are developing locally, you can have you know you can iterate over just a part of your CI CD. And if you are, you know, once you go into production, you could like swap out the the local, you know, the Docker, um, the local Docker engine for, you know, a CI/CD uh, for like, you know, Circle CI or you know something that is going to, you know, handle all the sprawling off to you know dozens of targets. So the idea being, like, as a developer, you don't really care about the underlying implementation. You just say, like, you know, these are the five steps I do when I release my code. And, you know, when I'm locally, it runs this way. And when I put it into, you know, in, when I commit it and, and our, you know, the real pipelines kick in, um, they replace parts of it, you know, and maybe all I want to do is validation or maybe all I want to do is linting and I can run just those steps. So, I mean, it's. Well, the word that caught my it's attention. It's a crowded that, space. <laughs> I was going to say, the word that caught my attention that reminded me of some of the work, your your old your old job, was declarative, right? That seems to be their calling card, right? The idea is that you're just going to describe the pipeline you want, and then you know, magic happens, right? There's a system yeah, behind magic. the scenes that's going to make sure that that pipeline is looking like that, but it sort of abstracts you away from having to do kind of all the heavy lifting and like mm-hmm. manual configuration of it. Am I, right. Am I generally, you know... Is that a, is that a fair statement? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think most most people are in agreement with the shape of CI/CD. Uh, it's the implementation that is is you know fungible. And what they're trying to do is say like, hey, we've agreed on the shape. Uh, let's put, you know abstract away the little building blocks, and uh, you know we'll build up a, a large community of resources, and you know. People will be able to to move their their code around no matter where they are. You know, if they're on Azure, if they're on GCP, you know, AWS, local, it doesn't matter. You know, the to the developer, it's the same experience. They're trying to, you know, just like like with Docker, they're like, look, if you throw it in this container, it'll be the same anywhere. Now they're saying, like, look, if you use Dagger, your CI/CD experience will be the same as a developer, no matter where you go. Now, now this is the this is the old, uh, you know, the developers they don't do the magic. Someone else has got to do the fucking. Magic, yeah, yeah, right. And and like let let's like I uh, I mean I guess it is an abstraction. I don't I don't know I don't know what to call this general pattern of like we got we got a we got a mess of a situation. So let's add a thing on top of it, and <laughs> and, and like let's add something on top of it that is that is. M- more componentalized and and yeah. maybe and maybe cleaner because it's newer but then you know it's like it's like all sort of utopias where like if you go below a certain level like you're in a sprawling like you know dirty place where you got to do integrations and stuff like that which is fine mm-hmm. right like it's i'm sure there's crazy stuff going on in chip land well that i mean that, that that's the thing that they they say like in their announcement you know a developer's dream is a devops engineer's nightmare well you know, there are a few problems with that. <laughs> and, and so, so as a historic analog now, now, you know, Brandon kind of brought it up is like, I feel like if we were to go to the, uh, you know, even the current, but definitely the, the many years of the old, uh, the old chef and puppet world, right? It's a similar kind of idea where like, you know, 
maybe you don't have to do all this this work. You can just go to the community and reuse these things and talk about how you want to, you know, set up a server or how you want to configure a networking thing. And like, so I'm curious, like when it go comes to like the 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 magic, like the crappy integration work that developers yes. are hidden from, uh -huh. like 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 who does Who's that? Who's going to do that? <laughs> yeah, and and like and like. Oh the, wait, 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 wait. For 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 those of you uh, not watching the video stream, here's where I wave my hand and say, "That's the community." <laughs> <laughs> and 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 then and then the second thing is that is it actually possible to get people to not want to do the magic on their own, or I don't or know. Do, or, or do people like for example like like in in Chefland, would people reuse? stuff from the community more than they would make it on their own or would they fall into like because you know we we encounter this in in the um in the in the past internal development layer mm -hmm, is like mm -hmm. you try to have to use matt ray's signaling a community uh that that does all these things that you reuse and then developers don't have to worry about it but then it turns out that every development team is an edge case and they have to go like implement their own stuff and like exactly. does, does that end up happening with chef that like People are basically like, oh, I know there's five different ways to configure a load balancer, but we have a really special need, so we're going to start from scratch uh, yep. and uh, do that. I, I, yeah, I mean, that that's that's a perfect analog because what would happen uh, over over in, in, in Chefland is, you know, there are there's a community site with hundreds of cookbooks, and there were some that were, I don't know, 30 or 40 that were you know, provided by chef that eventually became common resources built into the language. Mm, um, right. You know, but the implementation of how to stand up Apache, you know, yeah. even that was was opinionated. Um, or, you know, standing up MySQL or, or you know, any, any any anything you describe, like someone will have a different opinion. And so what would happen is the... Um, the the common resources would kind of bubble up and eventually move into the language but like you know what what would happen at a large enterprise is they might have a hundred cookbooks and they might use five or ten community ones and even those you know they were like well we forked it you know and they'd fork it and not send their pu push their patches upstream and you know there yeah. is an effort a community effort to keep you know some core functionality around but i i really feel like um, you're going to be left with some pretty simple building blocks and people are still going to have to do a lot of lifting themselves because I mean, CICD, like what you end up with is syntax, short, sh syntax, uh, the sugar you know, shortcuts rather oh, shortcuts. than, you know, like, like, you know, when I use, uh, you know, uh, circle CI or something, I can say like, look, I'm going to be using Ruby two point seven or you know whatever and you know so it's like oh ruby 2.7 i'll go get all that tools for you and then mm -hmm. and you're gonna run these ruby commands and that's cool that but like somebody has to go and write that somebody has to maintain that um i mean they're so just they're, the problem, they're reinventing like, a lot of stuff right but so in the world of like go back to the config management it did seem like while people would write it on their own there was always at least most places they would there was like a need for a standard. People felt like, yeah. hey, when we do it, we should do it this way. So even if they did it on their own, they felt like there was already like a predisposed like need, like, hey, we need a way to always do it the same. So that seemed like a well-established, Oh yeah, like, this yeah. is what we want from config management. Like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like on this pipeline stuff, while I can see why it would be nice, I don't feel like it's at the same level of like where config management was, say, when Chef and Puppet came about, right? It was like, you know, because it's just as easy. I don't know if it's just as easy, but I just think a lot of times people will be like, well, we're doing AWS, so let's just build the pipeline in there, right? Like, it feels like that. Well, and, and there are already likely. like 30 or 40 choices. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I guess it's like coming out with this now doesn't feel like the problem is like, like, like this doesn't feel like as big a problem as config. And you can argue, we can even argue with like the outcomes of Chef and, you know, here Rumbling's <laughs> puppet, maybe maybe going the way of Chef in, in, in the near future. I don't know. Um so I, I don't know. So I guess you could just say it's like, is this a like really big problem? And I don't know. Maybe I, that's not that's maybe it's not thing. so it's like, problem I, either. I, I want to give these guys the benefit of a doubt. I mean, you know, Docker, you know, a lot of the concepts that Docker encapsulated already existed, right? You know, we already mm -hmm. had jails and, and C groups True. and, and yeah. stuff like that. And they put a nice interface on it, but it's like, 
you know, a lot of people have already been in this space for a long time. I mean, I see, you know, people are like jump in between, you know, harness to, you know, circle to GitLab to, you know, what, what you name it. There's like a lot of vendors in this space. And are you going to provide an abstraction over the other vendors? Cause they won't care for that. Right. Right. So maybe the question you're just asking is, or maybe the strategy is just as simple as like, Hey, the belief is they can do it better. Right. And they've got some history with a track record of doing, you know, doing Docker, which obviously was a huge success. We can maybe, we can argue about the bigger success effect. Now. <laughs> yeah. Bigger success now we can argue if that was like timing or product, but whatever. I mean, they have this track record. So I guess, Hey, why not walk up to the plate, swing again, see if you can, hit, you know, this time though, if there must if be it, money there is all I can figure. Cause there are so many companies doing, well, it. I'm just going to offer up this advice. If Microsoft offers to buy them for like, you know, many billions of dollars this time, just, just say yes. Microsoft's say already yes. got GitHub actions. I know, but I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. Like, Hey, Hey, if, you know, Hey, if they call you this time, just take the money. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't take the VC money. Just be like, no, no. I learned from my Docker experience. We're just going to take the money. You, you've got one boat, get a bigger boat. All right, bigger boat, little jaws. I like that. Gotta write that down. Write that in there. Get a bigger boat. Why make a note of the uh... layers of abstraction? Layers of abstraction. It's layers on layers. All right. So let's get that. that was uh, one minutes. <sighs> All right. And then, uh, everybody, when you've finished listening this podcast or this streaming you can check out another good podcast trace the trace route podcast so everyone go listen to that one download it tell everyone that you enjoyed it i lost my chat window where's my chat window now i've made everything too big how many uh applications can you have open on two on two monitors at once is there someone come up with the math like on two max at once yeah i got two 27 inch monitors what is there for my Maximum number of applications <laughs> I'm allowed to have open. Like there should be like a, a calculator for this. It's like, yep, you've now exceeded. You have to shut something down, right? It's like yeah. you have too many windows for your mind. The computer can handle it. You can no longer handle it. I think. I think. Uh, you know, isn't there a, a Dunbar number that's like uh, <laughs> a like, Dunbar number for like? I think. I think fifteen. I think you can have fifteen max. Maximum fifteen. Mm, it's an advise, it. advisable to have eight. Right now. And now I say 15 because sometimes, you know, like your Zoom app just stays open. Right. right? Like, so it's like you can kind of like overflow. Like I think six because you can have basically yeah, two main yeah. windows and let's, then let's, four let's small got, windows. Yeah. And, then oh, you can you... Have, and then you can overflow, like you said, if you have like web, uh, like streaming or something like that, that can like jump in I for see. a little bit for like that could be your eighth, but it has to go away after like I see, I see. But you, you mean actually you can see the window. Yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like at this point, if I can't see it, if if you start like minimizing stuff into the, then it's just like it's all, it's a shit show. It's like everything's yeah. lost. Check, like, I check can't that find link. That's me. what you need. That's what you need. What what is this? This eight eight, eight fully. Okay. Like yeah. See, eight this. eight's eight's coming up. Uh, uh, systems guy says eight. So maybe that's there's some kind of number there. Oh yeah, mm. this is a big couch. <laughs> <laughs> what is this one? What is this? Oh, see, this brought up another window. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You only need two monitors, man. What is that, man? Engineering. <laughs> I don't know. Do I you, mean, do you yeah, hire him? I, hire him or her? I don't uh, know, maybe. Man. You know, I think I, they need, like, I, I'm some just, kind of desk. That, that is their... some next level stuff. I mean, you know, because I've, I've done my, uh, I've done the Airstream or whatever, AirPlay to, to the TV, and I'm like, hmm, should I be coding here? I don't know. Mm. I think I think if you have a setup like that and you hire them, you're just going to end up with a bunch of gratuitous layers of abstraction, like just <laughs> just like building out platforms and. No, man. Know. Clearly, this person has laser focus. Right? There's nothing yeah. else they could possibly yeah. look at. <laughs> it's it's a very wide That's laser. True. That's actually true. <laughs> mm. All right. <clears throat> All right. All right. Mm. So. We have thirty more minutes, basically. Yeah, Matt Ray. Yeah, yeah, to go. I gotta call the old insurance okay. company. Well, there was some exciting. Uh, I don't know. Let's call it human resource news. Maybe not HR in the sense of you know like paperwork and uh, annual enrollment. Although I'm sure that comes up too. But it looks like there was an article that Goldman Sachs is is tracking workers swiping in and out. 
right? Which is probably why they don't want tailgating. I, I recently, <laughs> speaking of HR, I recently redid my security, my annual security check. You know, so I'm all, all up on that stuff. You got your, you got your private, your confidential, some other security layers uh, that you can have in there. And uh, of course, you know, you, you if the proper answer, uh, if someone says they forgot their badge and they want to come in, even if you know them, is uh, I think one of the proper answers was to ignore them and quickly go inside is a possibility. You can also, you know, tell them that, uh, you know, they need to go check in uh, at the desk there. And I feel like, man, I feel like that has got to be one of the most awkward human interactions possible if you're actually following that, right? Because it's just like, really? Like, is that, uh, that going to be the case? Like, there's so many times back when I went to an office where there was someone that I knew behind me. Like, let's say, you know, our friend Barton George. He still works at <laughs> Dell, right? And, right? Uh, you know, if I was walking into Dell as an employee and Barton was behind me, like, I feel like I would just hold the door for him. You know, not not because I'm like a Victorian or something, but just because it's normal. He would hold <laughs> it's because Barton's a nice guy. Yeah, and then Barton would be like, mahalo. You but know, no, like, <laughs> is it this article giving you uh, a whole nother reason, right? Because now you're not being impolite. You're saying, well, listen, you need to get credit for being in the office, right? Uh, That's what this is like in... having someone like punch your card for yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, it's actually opposite now. You don't ever, and at least in Goldman Sachs, you want to always be swiping in to prove, because that's going to be the yeah. evidence that yeah. you are in the office and that you're doing a, a better job. At least it's the swiping and, out. And they're, they're probably stack ranking employees and, and probably a large percentage of your annual performance is office attendance. Oh, that would be well, the whole article. So, so I, you want to you want to make sure that your coworkers get sent below you because you're going to get that perfect attendance award and uh -huh. shine. Well, of course, when I read this article, I, I the only the most important questions came to mind about like what's going on here. So my first question is like, who came up with the algorithm to determine if you're in the office? Like how like when do you swipe in? Like if you swipe in like after 11 a.m., is that count as like being oh, there in the I morning? See the rules. Right, like right, right. what are like? Because there seems like a lot. Just like monitoring, there are a lot of potential rules here that you have to go through. Like what if you had a dentist oh. appointment? What if you got a, had a yeah. family emergency? What if you like came in uh, early, uh, late, but you're gonna work late? Like does that go off? And then of course, because it's being Goldman Sachs, like I would assume everything is reported in Excel. Right. So who is the team putting together the pivot tables to yeah. sort the data, to create the presentation in the investment banking format that gets rolled up to the executives? Like that has to be an entire meeting. Right. So like, what, what, how what are happens, we going to show this? What happens if you never swipe out? That, that's well, that's the my whole point. Then that gets my next thing. Is there a pager duty system involved? Like at some point, when does the notification go off? Like, are you either... This person uh -huh, hasn't uh -huh. shown off, so you're you're kind of being more negative. Or is it what you're saying, Matt? Is like Matt swiped in on Monday. It's now been seven <laughs> weeks, and he's I, never I think, swiped out. Like like, does someone have to then investigate that? And be like, is he still working? Then, oh my! So like so, a, the Big Brother angle now is going to be like. Not only can you not allow tailgaters in, you can't can't allow tailgaters out. Right. That's that's going to be the opposite. Like, does security have to like flip the entire system? Where like you're worried about people not oh, swiping out. Uh -huh, Everyone's swiping uh -huh. in now. Like, you don't have to worry about that. Gold, now Sachs you have to like look around now. and be like, yeah. you go go back, swipe out. You can't just you know you can't follow Matt out the door. Like that seems like a whole. And then again, like how is that represented in Excel? Like, well, are the graphs going to account for this? Is I, Matt I think, being there I think for we're seven weeks? Some AI in here. Some are we going to have like a logarithmic scale? Like, do those things get filtered out as noise? Then are we not telling the whole story? Can we just I mean, chip our chip the employees. And then oh, most importantly, it's like it how does this integrate? How does this integrate with Workday? Like shoes, that to me feet. is the most important yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah. Is there yes. an MBO in, in uh, Workday? Is it automatically updated? Do I have to provide that data myself? Like, I, I feel like there's a lot inside of this. This could be a, a whole new Workday module. Well, maybe you can upload a CSV prisons. file. That's that's <laughs> probably what you can do is you can integrate through uh, through uploads. Now, I'm guessing also since they're in bank banking, they probably use Meco charts, right? Like, that's pro they probably have that, uh, that add-on uh, for Excel. That's M-E-K-K-O chart. You can tell when someone is like, really in finance and banking if they use these charts because they're not really like standard uh, i think you always have to buy a uh, an optional thing to to have them in there we used to use these charts and they certainly they certainly do look cool 
uh, as far as their usefulness. You know, it's it's a kind of it's a multi bar one hundred percent area graph chart. Right. So, so use this a lot for like market cap. On exactly. The, on the is, stock market, right? It's great <laughs> for TAMs. Like if you, if you wanted to put all infrastructure software, the TAM for it, uh, across vendors, you could do that in a Meco chart really well. So you would just be total hours worked would be your unit, right? And right. then you would just that, put everybody on there? And then, right? and then maybe, uh, oh, I know what you do. So total hours worked. Uh -huh. And then each, each uh, you do the, each vertical column is a group. Within right. Goldman Sachs, like and then, VPs, and then, interns, right. and, and then and then uh -huh. it's just people who fill it up, right? And so yeah. you can start to see that, like, oh, look here, you know, the the uh, the uh, these people who we send out to get us coffee are always coming in and out of the office. I don't know what's up with them. Obviously, they're not working well enough. And then these uh, these investment bankers, they're sitting here all the time. They they never leave. I don't well, know. Well, do you go one step further? Do you just like, you know, do some graphite? Do you just put this chart like literally in the open office? You just have oh, it up yeah. all the Information time. Information radiator. Yeah, with everybody's name at all yeah. times. And you just oh, and you uh -huh. just have it going red or green, like depending you, like the stock you could goes have up a, and down. A leaderboard. A leaderboard. A leaderboard, and then you kind of show like when you fall <laughs> off, right? You just literally have like some animation when you're That's like, good. Oh, That's that was eliminated. Yep. Mm. Like yeah. it. Yeah. Wow, I, you know my my kids are watching, uh, reading the Hunger Games series, and I'm I'm feeling a good vibe there. Yeah, I like it. Now like, now you know, now let's be a little genuine. The idea here was that people are not spending enough time in the office. Was that I don't I forget that part. Of no, the people article. are not I, returning to the office because they basically uh, Goldman yes, has yes. come back and said, "Hey, pandemic's you know officially over. Everyone needs to be back in the office." And so yes. what they're finding though is they've got thousands of people. Who are not reporting so this is why they they're just not this. swiping in that's the real problem they're they're <laughs> there they're just not swiping in now this this, so, su this suggests another thing is that the the bureaucracy is failing to report upwards enough if there is proper attendance right because in theory if people are in the office the manager will be there because the only reason to be in the office and there's two reasons there's three reasons to be in the office one because you get distracted at home two uh, the manager wants to do management by walking around and needs to see you, right? And then three, I don't know, free snacks. Right? Yeah. Like, and and so like, uh, like you know, so I assume the manager, you know, would see them because that's the point to do their management by walking around. Uh, so if these people aren't in the office, it would suggest that management is not reporting up the managers are not reporting up the chain. And so now they need to automate it, which also suggests that managers probably also don't want to come in. And so at some point, if you go up the, the bureaucratic hierarchy, there is someone who wants to go into the office and they are the ones who instigated. Right. Well, in this, this case, uh, that's this definitely moment. the CEO of Goldman Sachs. Like he has come out and said it unequivocally, you know, work from home was an aberration. You know, everybody needs to be in the office. So I guess, and it probably, my guess is it filters down a couple levels where whether or not people want to, like I would, I would assume his direct reports are always in the office, right? Oh, for sure. So or, probably or, or a third on level business trips. My guess, third levels where it starts to break down, right? Where yeah, third level okay, from the CEO, okay. people are sorry. Probably there's some people that just you said they're like they're pretty busy, they travel a lot. There's probably your legitimate reasons they're not going to be in the office. Now, fourth level, we're starting to get to free for all, right? Where there's people that are managing people, but they're like, ah. Eh, you know, I want, I want to be a good manager. My team's getting their stuff done. I I, I believe um, I can trust my people, right? So they're probably kind of in that real middle management dilemma, right? They probably feel like they could work at home and like it, and they feel like their their directs could work, but they're also being pulled by the above to get everyone back in. So I bet you that's the level where it all breaks down. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. And and do you think do you think if we did have that leaderboard, the CEO would be on top? You think they would they would always be up? Definitely there? not, like, but that wouldn't matter, right? Be, but he's, he, he doesn't have to badge he, in. He, he he's be, like the queen; right? he doesn't even need his own passport. Oh, yeah, 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 he wouldn't even it, like that's that question is crazy. Like, of course, he would be exempt from any type of of tracking of that. Like, that's rule number one. Like, when as soon as you implement the system, the first thing you do is you implement badges that will never be tracked. Right? That would be the first requirement. Right? You'd be like. Certain people on a list, we never report their attendance. Right, right. I mean, because you might be leaving to discuss some uh, top secret shit. like some Right, because you wouldn't want to know. There'd be a whole set of reasons that it would not be possible to track a certain Because you're working from your lake house in Tahoe. With the, with the, with the, on a big deal with the clients. Yes. With the but customer. don't you think you could just go in to the office? Like, I feel like I could go in and solve this in 30 minutes. I, and it would just be one meeting. It would be like, the rule is going to be the same rule it always is. 
if the people that are not in the office are making you tremendous amounts of money, you're not, you're fine. You're never going to ask them. And the people that are the the people that are not in the office are not making you tremendous amount of money. Those people are going to move on. Like that's going to be the answer to this question. Yeah, that's always people, the answer. Yeah, right? salespeople never badge in. Right. That's what I say. No one, no one investment banker that's pulling in billions of dollars of deals. No one cares. No one is going to ask about that person or what they're doing. Right. It's only going to be people that are not on the list, are not perceived as making tons of money that this will be a problem for. And frankly, it was probably a problem regardless if they were in or out of the office. So it's like the same rules just apply all the time. You want to be outcome based. That's what the digital transformation people say. You want to shift from activities to outcomes, business value. Right. right but like, that would be like, it seems like of all jobs, like investment banking would be the most outcome based, easy one to just like, just look at the end of the quarter. Okay. Well, well that person's know, doing great. Maybe another thing that happened is, you know, someone was walking the halls and they were like, I gotta, I gotta find someone to make me a spreadsheet for this. You know, we gotta, <laughs> if I can get a spreadsheet in the next 45 minutes, we can, we can close this deal. And maybe they were walking around. There's like, there's no one here who I can just walk up to and ask to make a spreadsheet. This is bullshit. And like, you know, what am I, what do I make my own spreadsheets? Fuck that. And so like, maybe this is just like, you got to have the, the, the people there. So it's, it's, that's the fourth thing. Well, I think what you're just saying is the optics, right? And I think that is a big part of it. Hey, this is the way, and I, I actually think this is maybe a, a reason that I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's just sort of like, Hey, if you sign up to work at Goldman Sachs, and I think it's fair to say, it's like, you are signing up to be in the office and you're to your point especially as an associate, you're signing up to be on call to do spreadsheets. And it's like, I think it's been pretty well established. I don't think anyone getting into those jobs, like they shouldn't be surprised by that. So at the end of the day, the fact that like, I mean, we kind of make a lot of jokes about this, but it's like, I kind of get it. It's like, well, that's what you signed up for. And if you don't want that, then you're probably just at the wrong company. And I think, I actually don't think the CEO, like, although the way they're going about it here seems kind of weird, right? It just seems like a little... Uh, I don't know, big brotherish. It just, it just seems like, yeah, at the end of the day, this is going to work itself out in six, six to 12 months. You know, the people that are not in the office probably won't be there anymore. You get a little drone to, to <laughs> do things for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess you're right. You know, I mean, you know what you're signing up for. It's like if you, if you start some sort of infrastructure software startup nowadays, you know, you're going to make a layer of abstraction. You just, you sign it up for that. that. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, uh, so we, you know, that's, that's good. I'm, I, I, I'm glad I don't work in an office. So I, I have to be tracked like that. And, you know, I just, I, I don't know. I don't think I even have a card. Do, is that like, <laughs> you're supposed to get you don't a, have cards, a badge right? of any kind, no kind of badge. No, no badge. I, you no. know, when I, when I, uh, over the years, when I traveled around, I would always, I guess I did have a pivotal badge. Yeah. I, I had a and, chef badge that I used like three times. Yeah, and I, I would always try to go to the local office and be like, can you add this office to my badge? And people would just look at me like I had five heads. like, And so it just after a while, I was just like, I, I don't know, whatever. This badge doesn't do anything. And uh, I, it actually worked in like one building somewhere, which was nice. You could go get free snacks. You know, again, exactly. My, in the, my uh, kids are like, you should interview at a place that's close that has free snacks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think I think a level of maturity will be and that pays well is mm. uh, is is what they'll put in there, so you can work on your layers of yeah. That, that that's my retort. It's like, well, if I'm paid well, I can buy more snacks, the uh, ones I want. That's how they get you, Matt Ray. They, they're like, mm. we give we give you this money, and you're like, yes, but when you, the company, buys free snacks, you can get a volume discount, so you can actually get better <laughs> snacks than if I were to buy them because I would be limited by my ability to buy uh, in volume. How am I going to eat $25,000 worth of granola bars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so instead, you got to buy like the shitty granola bars that, that oh, you can afford. My poor children. All right, yeah. Kote, if you started a company, would you offer free snacks? Absolutely. My, I was going to say, my answer to this question is no. Because like the this is I've seen this play out multiple times. Because there will come a time in, in that company's life that you'll have to take away the free snacks. And any goodwill that you create by giving out free snacks is so incredibly destroyed by a power of 10 when they are taken away oh, that like the, just the potential that one day you'd have to take away the free snacks is such a negative moment in an HR employee culture oh, way that it's not worth worst. having the free snacks. So that's what I like. Cause I've, I've seen, I mean, I've seen more passion sometimes about like the free snacks going away in a corporation than almost yeah. anything else that I have per- personally witnessed. So it's like, yeah. be wary. It's like, if you give out free snacks, 
that's a lifetime commitment for that company. Well, listen, I mean, I think you know what I would do. I mean, I'm just like, like week, week three of this company I started, I've got like Elliot and Associates and Tom O'Bravo on the phone. <laughs> We're just like, fig- I'm like, when's this cash out happen? Right? Like, <laughs> I, this place needs some optimization, and I'm not going to be the one to do it because I. The like first thing you say snacks. is like, "Yeah, we're still get, we still have free snacks, so build that into the spreadsheet. When you kill that off, that's going to really raise yeah, your yeah, it's going to ruin morale. That's that's uh, you, you don't you don't want that. I mean, it, it's yeah, yeah. So I think free snacks. You you definitely uh, you want to have it at the start, and then and then it's the way that you really uh, focus on that op ink to get your optics uh, to, to to do things. Although now now let's 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 throw that in the blender there, uh, Brandon. How much of a story multiplier is free snacks, right? Like, does mm-hmm. that, how does it work for the formula? Yeah. I, I mean, people always say like people will work longer if they get free food, right? So I don't know. Maybe you'd have to like say, I don't know if it's just on free snacks, but you'd just say like free food of some kind buys you like an extra hour per person okay. Okay. Per, <laughs> per day, maybe. I don't know. Every yeah. 30 minutes per day, something like that. Like, you're getting another 30 minutes out of everybody uh-huh. that works for you a day. We could spreadsheet this. Yeah, then you then Absolutely. You build, build that into your velocity, that. right? And then yeah. that's that's how you make the business case for uh, the free snacks until you get a CFO who's just like, I don't believe in that. No. The yeah. But, but, gonna, but, but there's, there's, there's an no accompanying spreadsheet that shows like by having less office space, we save money. True. That's you know, and all those remote yeah. employees, you know yeah. what? We'll, we'll send them a, an Uber Eats once a month and, and they'll love us. That's now, true. now, That's now you point. know, you know what an affordable. I think the the there's there's a, a meal that the CFO is going to love because it's very cheap. Beans, right? <laughs> basically, basically, I think what Look you could do, you know, beans. you know, you know how like at Coopers and other places, barbecue places, mm-hmm. are just a big pot of free beans. So I think I think what we do is we we have free snacks, but we have but it's just what, beans. <laughs> <laughs> it's just beans. We have, we have a big pot of beans and maybe and bananas. Everybody loves bananas too. Oh yeah, bananas are fine. It's just like you know, you just but you cycle them through. Like one day it's black beans, next day it's pinto beans, and it's black beans again. Then it might be black beans and pinto mm. beans. Man, just, a snack bar is just like the sides line up at Rudy's. Oh, that'd be so awesome. Yeah, maybe some like cream onions. corn and beans. Yeah. All right. Well, now that we've established the, the methodology around the free snacks, before we go, before we run out of time here, I did want to get both of your takes on like. Pat Gel- uh, Gelsinger, former uh, CEO of, I guess, VMware, now CEO of Intel, right? So his pay package came out today. Looks like he earned $179 million, roughly. So my question is, it's just simple. Like, do you think he had to enter anything into Workday during his review <laughs> to get that? Like, do you think he had, has he ever logged into Workday and put, like, updated his goals? Like, has it ever happened? That's, that's the most important question I want to know about that compensation. Uh, you know, I have never thought about that. Like, do, does the executive, I, I guess in Workday, you can probably delegate to your, your, yeah, uh, definitely can, right? Assistant. But do yeah. you think it has like, do you think it has goals in there? Like it actually has his goals, like, you know, probably. raise stock price. Sure. And like, he actually goes through and he's like, oh, it's like my review's coming off. I got, I guess, hopefully I'll get a good bonus, like $179 million. You think he's in there like, <laughs> you know, in, in the text box, but is he, that's the part of what I'm really curious. It's like, is he fighting the text box or is he like, man, I should do this in word, but then you cut and paste from word and then you're over the character count. And he's like, and, oh yeah. man, I'm no, trying no, to get he, another couple he, million he, dollars. He leans over his desk and punches I mean, the button and he's like you know uh, suzanne uh give me five out of five on everything across the board S- send that uh send that to my boss right and that's the other thing is the board of directors didn't log in do they log in and like review it that's the other part of like did they have a login to actually get it and go through and like oh, and yeah. it just you have to then acknowledge it at the end right you know you have to acknowledge well, like that, yes right. uh, yeah. like just to say something like pat you, you've yeah. done a great job we've decided to give you 179 million dollars this year uh, and we look forward to you having a great FY23. Like, is that like how it like it says? In, yeah, they just in the have like a, a standard form letter that you get yeah. for your your bonus. That would be great. I think. I mean, and, it's, and, it's and, fascinating. And, yeah, and they're like, we'll send you a Calendly, and we'll schedule this meeting, and we'll get the five of us, you know, the board and and you. I mean, probably not. But the question but also is, too, like, you know how you always have, no matter what happens, you always have to have something to work on, right? They'll always be like, and you know, oh, yeah. I really like to do it. So like after, after like, hey, Pat, listen, we, we reviewed it. Look, I'm going to give you $179 million. You did a great job this year. You've really b- built the morale around. But um, if next year you could build us faster chips, that would be really, that would be really good. <laughs> 
And I just want to tell you, um, I, you have the full support of, of me and everyone here. And if you have any questions or anything, let us know because we really want you to build faster chips. Okay. And then that's it. Like that's the end of the review. Like, is that how it it goes? I, I, yeah, I, I mean, basically, that's what every Intel board meeting is like. Right? Like, we're just they're, be they're like, just you like, know, we need faster chips. That's pretty much what we need. Is there any we questions? Got, we, we, had, we had the the McKinsey people wrapped up their recommendation yeah. for strategies for next year. Check out this Mecco chart. If you read it carefully, it says faster chips. Faster that's, chips. Uh, like, that's in our sweet spot. Yeah, that's all we need. Just if faster chips. That, that. Any questions? We, we can we can revisit this one seventy nine million number yeah it's like and hey you know pat you know if you if you pull that off maybe we can see 200 million next year right you know because like because that's the other thing because you think he's like oh man i only got 178 he's like i feel so just like i'm just so disappointed right because think when you cross the 100 million dollar threshold and you're like man i gotta get i gotta get to 200 like otherwise i'm just like because that's the other thing i always wonder they're like 178 kids pat all in he's all in at 178 at 150 he's probably distracted he's probably not really putting in his effort the full effort that's the other part of the compensation discussion uh discussion is like what do we got to do to keep pat excited right we got to really 178 is the number i'd love to hear that conversation I, i you know maybe maybe the deal i'm thinking in you know if i was told i need to make faster chips i would be like okay for every let's see every percentage that we make them faster i want you to pay me my my annual compensation faster and so like if if this is a kpi we can get behind if, yeah. If, uh-huh. yeah you, yeah. you want to you have some formula worked out there right that if 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 we make the chips 50 percent faster i want mm-hmm. a 150 percent bonus right? like it like or or whatever you know you work something out i don't know i don't know what it is and so you uh you really can uh, the fast chips are going to happen Right. Like it's 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 going to be it's it's going to pan I'll out like now. It. I think I think the real question we need to ask here is, well, I, I don't know if there's a CEO anymore, but, but let's just say the, the CEO of Workday. Do you think they enter in all of their own stuff? Like, are, they, <laughs> are they going in there like with their own stuff, with their own MBOs or OKRs or KPIs or whatever they're doing? Are, are they entering that in there, tracking it? Are they executive dog fooding it? The biggest question I have about all of Workday is comes down is like clearly there's like a missing link around because like anyone who's actually had to enter anything into it, right, immediately understands that the text field is almost impossible to edit, right? Because you're always yeah. supposed to be like writing something of some length, right? So the only question is like everyone at Workday must know this, right? Because like they see it every day, right? And it's like at the end of the day, like the only thing that you can the only answer is like nobody cares right? Everybody is kind of in on it. They're like, we don't care what you do. Just like cut and paste from word, whatever. We're not going to spend one minute thinking about this because it has zero impact on the sales of this product, which in turn kind of like is a, an indictment of the review system, right? If you're like, if the thing that you're supposed to be able to do in it is not good, then it sort of does sort of, if you will, reveal how important it is to everyone. So, so I, I guess I just ended on, it's like, there's just some type of compliance need to have the system in place, but that's what matters. Like that it's in place, not that it's easily utilized is the only answer I can get, come to. Yeah. I, well, that defines a lot of software. Well, you know, you know what is easy to explain, Brandon, is how to get stickers. Absolutely. And this week I sent uh, some stickers to Daniel in California and he says uh, he's a big fan he's, and it's going to be the first sticker on his new laptop. So really glad to hear that and if you'd like a sticker all you have to do is send your postal address to stickers at softwaredefinedtalk.com i will be happy to send you a sticker anywhere in the world uh, a couple other things came out of uh, the slack this week i want to mention uh I'll, I'll let everyone look this up but uh brett he uh, recommends the magnificent app which corrects your previous console command i just think it's fantastic so just go look at it you can see the quick demo in the link um many of you will probably enjoy that also uh unity is hiring so if you're looking for a job here in austin texas you can probably go work at unity uh good friend brian gracely over at solo he's looking for some help in tech marketing so if uh if that's your thing you know reach out to brian and all of those jobs are available to find more information in the slack channel that's labeled jobs so go find those people there's actually some people in there looking for jobs so if you're actually looking for candidates you can also see some resumes in there if that's your thing. And then finally, Matt, uh, it came to my attention. Someone on Twitter said, happy birthday. So I assume you had a birthday somewhat recently. So Matt, happy birthday. And if not, the person on Twitter <laughs> is is lying. No, no. Well, one, it was, one day or the other. 
It was last month, but sure. All right, we'll take it. You know, was it happy? Uh, it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> Matt Ray. The middle years. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, I had something else I was going to say, but I forgot. Oh, do you think that solo.io, do they have a layer of, of abstraction? I, th- I think I need to investigate and see if they're abstracting things. Yep. Should have Brian. I should have Brian on. We'll do an interview. He's always got some. He'll tell us what, what's going on. We'll even get his take, maybe get his take on like why he changed jobs. He'll, he'll probably have some good stories. Well, uh, well, there's also some conferences there. At the end of May, you have that conference over there in Round Rock, Austin. Lots of DevOps days coming up. There's one May 4th and 5th in Austin that I'll be at, a DevOps Days Austin. We also have our uh, Spring Tour Chicago, April 26th and 27th. That is this month, and I will be there as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, then we have our Spring Platform one, and, and VMworld has been named, renamed VMware Explore. That's exciting in August. But if you want to find out uh, links to those, you can go to softwaredefinedtalk.com slash 352. The uh, the Spring Tour Chicago, I, I, I think it's either really cheap or free. I think you do have to pay something for it, but uh, it'll be great. I looked over the uh, program for there for it, and there's a lot of like how to run stuff on Kubernetes for various types of developers, uh, which should be fun. Now, uh, you know, speaking of running things on, on Kubernetes and Beans and uh, stuff like that. Matt Ray, what do you have to recommend this week? <laughs> well, definitely, definitely I'm putting a link to uh, Johnny Cash's song, Look at Them Beans, because, you know, it's Johnny Cash. It's classic. And beans, um, the yeah, official and, and, food and, of software-defined talk. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you get them at Costco. Um, yeah, w- the sad thing is, like, Look at Them Beans was my introduction to my kids for Johnny Cash, so, whew. <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh i think my other recommendation is I, I recently read uh murder on the orient express the agatha christie novel with uh with one of my kids and then we watched uh, the movie uh the, the recent kenneth Branagh movie and you know, the book is is good it, it's fun reading like those kind of older i guess it's a classic you know it came out in the 30s or 40s whatever and you know it, like talking about the the time at, at you know the his, you know the historical placing of everything and and that was that was interesting and of course you know so much of it is just torn apart if you put it in a modern setting but uh the movie was probably hard to follow if you hadn't read the book i mean it's it's got a lot going on so uh huh. you know but uh if if uh i think it's you know the most accessible of agatha christie's or you know the most popular at least of her her novel so uh check that out if you if you want a, an easy read fun yeah. easy read I I, uh, I started watching that movie and and uh, it seemed okay, but I I didn't get that far. Yeah, it's, it's, every, it's everyone's kind of okay, but it's like there's like a dozen people. And that's too many for a movie. Yeah, that is a lot of people. There's lots of intrigue building up. I have to go back to that. How, how about yourself, Brandon? What do you have to recommend this week? All right, um, I'm going to recommend these Yasso bars. It's uh, a Greek yogurt like ice cream bar, and they're fantastic. Recently discovered them. They're available at Costco, H E B. I don't know, probably all over the United States, but the the thing that's great about them is they're 100 calories or less, and they very are. They remind you very much of uh, an ice cream bar. So if you're kind of looking for like a mm. sweet snack that's a little bit on the healthier side, at least on the lower cal side, I really uh, recommend yes. Yeah, so they're a little expensive, but like honestly, I was like, I think it's 100 percent worth it. So. Uh, get yourself a sweet treat that's not too uh, high cal. Try the Yasso bars. And also, I was going to mention this many times on the show. I was going to so Severance, the Apple TV Plus television show. I think it's fantastic. Tomorrow is the season finale. So I will say, have I try not to get the expectations too high, but my expectations are very high. So I will report next week whether or not it's safe to watch the entire season if it, if it paid off. So I already know there's going right. to be season two, which is like always one of those like, uh, I don't know, good and bad kind of things, right? You like to see it conclude, right? You don't want to get dragged on for a long period of time, but they've done a good job. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic Severance will deliver on a good season finale and my time will have been well spent. We shall see. All right. Well, I, I'll have to get around to watching that. Well, my recommendation, uh, we did, we did, uh, uh, the, maybe we'll do some more, but we did the last of, uh, for a while of our, our online executive round tables tonight. And we had the lovely, uh, Marcus, the sommelier and what he sent out he sent out some white wine but he also sent out 
uh, I, you know, I'm going to butcher this for people who actually know how to speak Spanish. Uh, the, this canned asparagus called cojo nudos, uh, as, as, as I'll have to take a picture of it to show, but apparently cojo nudos is like, uh, if you translate it, it means something like, you know, crazy balls, like, you know, this is crazy good. And, and apparently the king in exile, uh, of Spain, uh, ate some of these and said that he was like, "Wow, these are, these are great. And so now they're named, uh, cojo nudos. And they're basically like this white asparagus uh, that has been put in a, a large can. Uh, and, you know, my wife Kim's reaction was that that is gross and disgusting, and why would you ever do that? She's very extreme uh, in her opinions. But I think they taste delicious. They're great. And I, I think with a little bit of, like, bacon or maybe some, uh, some serrano ham, it'd be a nice uh, little sandwich. I think they're very popular tapas to have. But uh, you can look those up, get them in a can, Maybe I'll, I'll bring some back to the States to distribute to people. Although they'll probably be like, this goes directly in the trash when that joker leaves. Why didn't he just bring me Stroop waffles? That's what everyone wants. Uh, well, as always, this has been Software Defined Talk. If you want to get the show notes for this episode, you can go to softwaredefinedtalk.com slash 352. We've got a great Slack community. We set this up way before Discord is popular, so that's why it's Slack. I don't really know what the deal with Discord is. <laughs> But people seem to like that. And, uh, but it's Slack that we use. So if you go to softwaredefinedtalk.com, you can click on the Slack link, get yourself in there. We discuss all sorts of links, other things like that. There was a great uh, a pointer to a, uh, uh, on KUTX last Friday. They had a Yacht Rock night, and so uh, I got to check that out. I actually made a little Spotify playlist of all the stuff on there if you want to go look in that channel and find it. And with that, it's time to sail away. And we'll see everyone next time. Bye bye. Aloha. <laughs> oh, well, we had the uh, what is it? Sail away music. Ah, that's that's uh, that's well done, Kote. Well played, sir. Uh, all right. Well, thanks to everyone hanging out in the chat. Um, Brian was asking about some kind of spam. I don't know. I don't know if that's spam. The way out. I don't. I don't, I don't know see how it the got spam. In. It said restream bot. See, look at these guys. Oh, I did. I don't know what's. Uh, I don't know what. Oh. oh, restream bot is. I don't know what that is. Yeah, Matt Ray, did you do that? Is that your no, like, no, no, is no? That your I, devil I have no work? Idea where that came from? No. Huh. Matt Ray's devil work. Yeah, I got other. Oh, I think maybe work. someone in work. YouTube. That's what it is. Maybe someone in YouTube. Yeah, mm. we'll have to comment. go check that out. Yeah, we'll have to get it. All right, Matt, you got to go. Yep. Yep. Got to go. All right. Hey, thanks for everyone uh, that watching the stream this week. We'll be back next week this time so we'll talk to you then all right bye bye